To get started with Apache Spark using Databricks, we will use the community edition of Databricks. This gives us access to a single cluster with 6 GB of memory and notebooks to do our work. So if you don't have an account right now, you press, you go to get started. And then you fill in the form, confirm that you are not a robot. And after signing up, you will get a con an email to confirm your account. I think this is a standard procedure. Everybody knows how this works. And after that, we will, you can then log in into the Databricks environment. I already have an account, so that's why I will just jump ahead and, and sign in. So let me sign in. So when you sign in the first time into the Databricks environment, you will see this page. This is the online programming environment provided by Databricks. This environment has multiple sections that we can see at the left side of the page. And uh, for us to quickly get started, I will first show you the basics we need to first to start writing Apache Spark code. The first thing we need to know is that to run any source code, we first need some kind of computing resources. With computing resources, I mean CPUs, disk space, or RAM. So we first need to create a computational pool of resources with which we can work. And we do that by click by selecting the cluster on the left side on the page. We can create a cluster. And uh, this is the page where you can see all your available all your available clusters and here we just go to create cluster and create a new one we will give it the name cluster one and as you can see here the cluster had six gigabyte of memory and around one cpu core here you have to select the data bricks runtime our cluster will will run on will will executing so the databricks runtime is a combination of apache spark and other components that allows apache spark to run quicker and faster in the cloud so we will select the latest one this is this one and uh, in the future you can also come here and enter different configuration of apache spark so after we do that, we can then click on create cluster and this will create a cluster for us. Exactly now you can see that the cluster is in pending state and after everything is done, it will change the state. Now you can see that our cluster is up and running. The state has changed from pending to running. So now we need we need to write source code that you can execute on this cluster. For that, we need to go to the workspace and by uh, workspace section. A Databricks workspace is an environment for for accessing all our asset between the Databricks online programming environment. So you can think of it as the file explorer between the Databricks online environment. So let us go to the workspace. You can see there are some default folder in here and also some default files like documentation. We can or release node, trainings and tutorial. Here we can create notebooks, folder, uh, libraries or folder. To write source code, we need a notebook, a Jupyter notebook. And a notebook is a web application that allows us to create documents that contains source code. And it's quite popular in the data engineering and the data science community. So we like our work to be organized. So we will first create a folder. We will call it, uh, 
let's see reading data how can I call this let's call you reading data and then it creates a folder now you have a folder now we will create a notebook between this folder we will go there create a notebook so when we are creating a notebook we have to first give it a name i will call it reading file Now the most important thing we have to do here is to select the language of the notebook. As you can see here, you have the possibility to select one of the language supported by Apache Spark. We will first create a Scala notebook. We specify the cluster on which it's supposed to work. So we only have one cluster right now, and this is cluster one. So we will create it our notebook and there we go here we have our notebook it is it is it is attached to our first it's attached to our cluster we can restart the cluster we can detach and stuff like that so let me show you one thing we can detach here so now this notebook is cannot execute any source code because it's not attached to any cluster so we can attach it back by selecting the cluster here and everything we can then write here will execute will be executed on cluster one so now we have a cluster that provided us with computational resources we have a notebook that can help us write Apache Spark code. So the next thing we need are the data to work with. In the description of this video, there's a link to a OneDrive part that you can use to download the data we will use in this course. So I'll jump ahead. We copy it. It's the link. Enter the provided password. download the file so I will press pause here till the download is completed so after the download is completed on tip you can see that it is a tip file so you can use your favorite tip file program to unzip the, the file so I will go ahead and unzip it for myself. Let me do that, do that. Where is it? So you can see we have multiple files in here and we have to upload all those files to into Databricks so that we can work with it. So let me go over there. Let's go back to Databricks. Okay. So now between the Databricks environment, go to the data section here you can see that we have the possibility to create databases or table right now we want to work we will be working with files so we will add new data into our environment here we can upload file from multiple sources or even cloud 
storages like Amazon S3. This is the Databricks file systems or even other data sources. And here you can you can see that we have a lot. We have many choices between different data sources. What we can what we will do right now is to just drop our files here. So we can. And this will then upload the entire all those files into our databricks working environment so that we can then use the data later to learn apache spark this may this might take a little bit of time as you can see that many files involved that's why i first press pause here and come back when it's done So now that the upload is completed, you can see that we will have a list of files down here with the part where the data are stored between the Databricks online environment. So now we have everything we need. We have a notebook, we have a cluster, and we have data. The next thing to do is to, the next thing we will do is to see how we can then access those data between the Databricks UI using Apache Spark.